Racing takes place out at Turf Teen on Saturday. We have got a nine race program. We are racing on the inside track Saturday, the 30th of March, 24, 2024. And uh, joining me on the line is Alistair Cohen, who had a brilliant day out at the Vol on Thursday. And Alistair, well done for uh, the tipping on Thursday. You guided the guys in the right direction and hopefully they managed to get uh, the cash. Yeah, thanks so much, Rehill. Hello to uh, all the viewers and listeners. Um, yeah, it was a good day on Thursday. The form has been good. Obviously, the joint effort of D's and R with the pick six, that landed um, for, I think it was 1,296 rand. The place accumulator never looked in doubt uh, after the first leg, where we just scraped through in the first leg, and everything else went according to plan. So hopefully this is another meeting that, that goes all right, and uh, we can continue on that form. I'd like to be in that type of form come next week, which is, the for me, the flagship day on the Joburg calendar. I love Champions Day. Um, I think the computer form sprint should be marketed as South Africa's premier sprint in my books. But uh, anyway, that's going to be a great card next Saturday. As for this Saturday, I know it's Easter Saturday at Standalone, so the pools are going to be higher than average. It's also alongside the Dubai World Cup, so there'll probably be extra viewership. Um, but with that said, it is a typical week out from the big day uh, type of card. You know, everyone's obviously gone, uh, done their, done their important workout for Champions Day and uh, and this uh, we don't have any horses that I, don't, that I think will be running on uh, on Champions Day July Day, Summer Cup Day, Met Day or anything like that anytime soon Well let's get into it, race number 1 1450 metres the distance it's a maiden juvenile play for the Phillies 9 race programme so that means the bar pod will commence with the running of race number 2 now race 1, joint favourite Fatal Floor and Sonic Jet both at 2 to 1 Oxalis Gold is at 5 to 2, and then it's 11 to 2 about Vavara, Bella's Charm, Tins, and Zantico. 16 to 1 Zantico ran on Thursday, beaten 29 lengths behind VJ's Angel, so uh, probably unlikely to take a place on Saturday, but just monitor number 6. But uh, the favourites here, 2 and 4, there's a. Uh, there shouldn't be a lot to choose between them on that run to across the pond. I know that Sonic Jet finished in front of Fatal Floor, but. Fatal Floor did have a run after that where she ran second and improved and uh, the 1450 will no doubt suit her. Pierce Stratum takes a ride for Brett Crawford. Yes, and I also think that the uh, 1450 will also suit number four, Sonic Jet. Rahil, I, I see no reason why Fatal Floor will suddenly turn it around with number four, Sonic Jet, especially with Sonic Jet being drawn in gate one. Um, as you mentioned, there was a length and a half between them in favour of Sonic Jet. Take Your Place was a runner at the Vaal on Thursday and came out and ran third after being touched off. So I have, um, I have reservations about the strength of the form, I must be honest. Um, but out of that run to across the pond, I'm anticipate that Sonic Jet will still have the slightest advantage over number two, Fatal Floor. Um, Far Far Var is probably overpriced under Richard Farid for Sean Terry. Of course, Richard's first uh, day back in the saddle this week was on Friday, out at Fairview. Uh, and then there's a word out about number three, Oxalis Gold, the daughter of Gold Standard. She's making a debut over 1,450 metres. She's related to horses who got a trip. For, um, Seville Orange was the winner of the track in Ball Oaks with Lucky Hudalakis. Um, Bournemouth, who of course has been quite prolific with Alan Kreef. Dan Kadecha is also a relation, is a half-brother to Oxalis Gold. So no surprise to see her making a debut of a 14.50. <coughs> Excuse me, and there's a word out about number three, Oxalis Gold. So um, watch her go down to the start. She could be the, the big mover in race number one on the card. I think it's a pretty shallow event. Yeah, that's the uh, numbers two, three, and four, the numbers that could dominate in race number one. But uh, number four, Sonic Jet, that's going to be the top selection here on her debut performance. Moving along to race number two, the start of the bar pot, 1,450 metres, a trip once again. It's a maiden juvenile place where Leg Legend of Arthur is the favourite at 6 to 10. 7 to 2 about uh, number 6. The Cane Train, 8 to 1 into 11 to 2. And then it's 12 to 1 and better bar. Those now, uh, Legend of Arthur... He put up a nice run on debut and uh, there's no doubt that uh, stepping up uh, to 14.50 will suit him. He's got that inside draw to assist. He was fancied on debut so there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, supporters uh, in his camp once again. And uh, at 6 to 10, I'm sure guys will be looking to um, start their all to comes on the day. I think he'll win. Um, I think it's as simple as that. He's 6-10. to 10. He's 6-10 to 10 for a reason. His debut run behind Mount Pinatubo was good. Even though Mount Pinatubo was a surprise winner from the Van Furen pair, um, the reports are that Mount Pinatubo obviously is running in the nursery a week out and he's come on like you can't believe. And the second was Kimrick is also held in high regard. And Legend of Arthur was able to finish two and a half lengths behind them and there was I'm just looking at it now, 11 and a half lengths back to fourth. Not that fourth, fifth or sixth in that six horse 
Coast Field have come out and run. I don't like much of the form that the others bring into the picture. The one first time it makes a little bit of appeal, that's number five, one and all, but it would not be the Pettigrew way to win with them on debut. So I think it's... Uh, pretty much put and collect and I, I hate using that cliche but this is as close as you get um, on the day banker in the bar pot hard to beat number four legend of Arthur um, he'll have to have an absolute stinker to get beaten yeah as simple as that in race number two race number three a maiden plate uh, Phillies and mares 1200 meters the distance start off the place accumulator 10 past one is the off time favorite is Empress of Normandy and someday maybe at five to two now when they are uh, top in the betting now uh, when someday maybe is uh, is uh, right up there in the market, that just goes to show that it is a very very moderate uh, lineup because she's had 22 starts in the maidens and she's yet to get it right. Although um, her current form does seem like uh, she's uh, getting closer to that victory. Dragon Dragon 11 to two into seven to two. Autumn Var four to one and then it's eight to one and better ball those. Now it's not a race that is gonna get. Uh, many people excited but um, it's a race where the guys could look to uh, make uh, a bit of cash with trifectas and quartets it's, well, it's an opportunity for someday maybe to win um, probably her best opportunity yet um, in my bar but I've gone one and five here a heel and I'm horribly horribly uncomfortable with just two horses in a field of eight where you can probably put a pen through at least three of them um, you know, let's talk about the first time of first, number five, Autumn Var. I've not heard anything about this daughter of Var. Tyron Zaki is patient um, with his, with his uh, debutants. Uh, Richard Faree takes her out. I don't know whether that's because he was likely to be sitting in the jockey room or whether they made contact with his agent, Ken. I wouldn't know. But with that said, does she have to be of any ability to win this? No, she doesn't. She, she she needs to be just a little bit above average to win this race. So that's why I've got her in, although there's no real uh, fireworks in the market. Uh, number one, Empress of Normandy, I've backed up. I know that Empress of Normandy and uh, someday maybe faced off when they met behind Princess Lola, but Prince, uh, rather, someday maybe is just not ripped up any trees on the turfantine inside track. I know those were early days that she tried the tight turning course. I don't know if she's got the turn of foot that's going to make her the same force that she is down the Vile Straits or at the Vile where she is at home. So I think number one Empress of Normandy might turn that form around with number two someday maybe. If you are looking for an alternative, that's pretty straightforward. Number six, Dragon Dragon. Definitely I respect her chances. She can improve from her first start which was fair behind Quick Trip. Although she was well beaten the, uh, the Quick Trip was not not a, was not winning out of turn won that with ease won by three and a quarter lengths the horses in and around dragon dragon i wouldn't get too excited about but like i said she can at least kick on with that first run under the belt so she would be the alternative to uh, to the one and five i've got on the bar pot yeah i think to add to number six dragon dragon i thought she was a bit unlucky not to finish slightly closer to the action and um, probably reduce that deficit of uh, eight and uh, three parts of a length so but she's definitely a runner that uh, could be the biggest improver in race number three but uh, monitor the market with number five autumn war richard farid autumn var richard farid takes the right here for tyron zaki no support at this point in time is um, at four to one in the market but if there is a uh, support as we edge closer to race time and there's a positive talk around this uh, daughter of our well then she's definitely the runner that uh, you want to be with race number four 1450 meters 1350 the off time favorite there's a light at eight to ten richard free takes a ride for roy magna narrowly touched off last time out behind alberic it's four to one about strewn sky it's uh, six to one the playboy bomber and action at seven to one and then it's ten to one and better bar those now this horse, uh, there's a light. There's no doubt that uh, many players and uh, many punters will be in his camp and uh, look to bank him in uh, the start of the pick six. And uh, from draw one, he should get all the favours and he should be hard to beat with Richard Furrier aboard. But this horse, the Playboy Bomber, I was encouraged by the way he finished off his race last time out. I know he was well beaten, but I think he could be the potential improver in race number four. Absolutely spot on, Rahil. When I went through this card, I banked it number one, there's a lot. And the reason why I banked him in my bar pot, and he's no banker in the pick six, the reason why I banked him in my bar pot is because I had a good look at number nine, play, the Playboy Bomber. Although well held on the old Bay Rig form, as you say, the, the improvement was evident in the second start. But the draws just put me off on number nine, the Playboy Bomber. Whereas there's a lot's going to have everything his own way from draw one. So that's why I bank it number one, there's a lot in the bar pot. I make him the top choice. Eight to ten, the price. Richard Faree takes a ride for Ray Magnus. 
they don't team up often, um, but I'd anticipate that this will be his day in the sun. But I think there's there's a good few that could win this. Um, I don't like Strun Sky, the Van Myl form is not good at all, but and action over a thousand meters last time. I, not often I scratch my head with Sean Terry decisions, but I did there um, running and action back over a thousand meters. I know he showed pace over 1200 the time before, but he hasn't got the pedigree. Um, to win over a thousand, but he has certainly got the genetics to go well over fourteen fifty. So there's another horse I'd include into the pick six at, a, at around seven to one to make a case for him to beat number one. There's a lot I can't. Um, I think he needed that run behind Van Mile. By the way, I know Strun Sky has him hold, but I think he badly needed that run. Um, maybe I'm overcomplicating it. There's a lot just sticks out here, but um, the horse that's had victory in the sights last time, just got nabbed over the closing stages. I don't know whether it's a confidence issue. I don't know whether that's going to take the wind out of the sails confidence-wise either. But, um, yeah, I, I'm just a little bit uneasy about taking a win better number 3 to 10. But in the bar pot place accumulator, I can't see him missing. Yeah, he certainly does look to be the, the ideal horse uh, to uh, banker in the bar pot and the pier. But in terms of the pick six, if you are looking for a result, well, number three and action, along with number nine, the Playboy Bomber, could be two horses to back up number one there's a light from draw one he should be hard to beat but um, if you want to play a bit safe well then numbers three and nine could be your backup moving along to race number five 25 past two is the off time 1200 meters the distance it's an mr 70 handicap it is a start of jackpot one halberdier 28 to 10 twice as well 7 to 2 9 to 2 circus lights 11 to 2 princess lola long sword 7 to 1 and better ball those now i remember when longsword debuted and uh, there was quite a bit of uh, talk around this horse and then prior to him uh, winning his uh, his maiden i remember that he was uh, a horse that uh, obviously sean terry thought that uh, would be good enough to run in uh, the feature on on gold cup day and he ran him in that race after winning his maiden but he's a horse that has just never been able to rip up any trees and and do anything useful from an 88 down to a 72 and he's running in this company compared to what he took on as a juvenile surely one of these days he's got to pop up his recent form doesn't inspire much confidence but in a race of this nature he, he could find his his feet later on in the day he's got that deep draw so he may not be able to get to the front but he's a runner that i think needs to go into the pick six he definitely needs to go into the pick six. There are two points I want to bring out there forward about number six, Longsword. First of all, um, the, the first point is the horse that he was as a two-year-old, the horse that he was touted to be. Um, he's a lovely, big, solid, strapping son of William Longsword. He, he looks the part. I mean, if there are any prizes in the parade ring for best turned out, number six, Longsword will win that. Um, that's, that's beyond question. The second point is that this is the first run in the colours of Sean Terry Racing. He ran under Bernard Cantor for... for well, to date, and uh, Mr. Cantor's obviously uh, sidestep Longsword, and Sean Terry's taken the leap of faith to uh, to retain the son of William Longsword. So I know Sean's an optimist, but um, that's a bit of a vote of confidence in my books. I've left him out the bar pot, but he's certainly not out my, uh, my pick six. My numbers in the bar pot are five, seven, and eight. Let me just double check that. Yep, Circus Lart, Sam the Wise Man, and Smelting, all for pretty much the same reasons. They've got the right type of profile to go close here. Circus Lart can do absolutely anything. He's obviously shrugged off those demons of being a slow starter. Um, he runs well on the inside track. A lot of Grant Maroon's horses do run best on the inside track. They seem to um, have a turn of foot that can make them quite a force there. Seven Sam the Wise Man. Here's a horse that's been on my radar for a while. The Cabello Matsunyani now gets on board. Ratings come down from, well, I mean, the last time he was competitive was off a 60, and he's down to a 60 again. So I think that he's pretty much in the right place to give a good account of himself. If not winning, I think he'll be there and thereabouts. And then good old Smelting uh, runs second at a last start behind In the Ether. In the Ether is a hard horse to stop on the inside track at that type of level. Sianda Sasebo seems to get a nice tune out of this daughter of Cape Town. Now, it'll be great for Bridget start off and Sean Patterson to get number eight smelting a deserved second win will be a 60 second start I mean look at her record it's unreal um, I don't think she's all that far away either it's my type of race to be honest I think that this is a type of race we can make money in and the horses to revolve the bets around leaving out the favorite number one Halberdy I think he's got too much weight um, and I think he's too short in the market so five seven and eight with six is back up Alistair this horse wings of Nike confuses me because the way she runs on you will be, you'll be sold 1200 meters next time out we can put the lights lights out with this uh, daughter of Val but 
Our form has only been good over a thousand meters, three rounds over the distance, three complete blanks, but from draw one, if she's just up there, surely she'll be able to see out the 1200 because, I mean, the way she, given her running style, it, it would give you the indication that, you know, it should be right up alley, but uh, she hasn't been able to uh, really prove herself over the distance. That's the kicker. It's the 1200 for me, Raheel, that uh, that I think is just going to catch her out. I, I agree. She's got the running style. I'm looking back at her record. I remember she won a graduation, played 25 to 1 in a field of 6 at the VAR when, uh, when beating above the world. She was given a 6 pound penalty to a 61, but then it all ran away from her. Uh, she went up from a 61 to a 60 to a 79 in the space of two wins and again got another penalty. I know she's coming back down now to a workable mark. In fact, you've, you've taught me into number four wings of nike but not over 1200 meters i think save for her when we go uh, back to a thousand meters and potentially down the fall straight well her stable companion sam the wise man a horse that alistair quite fancies at 12 to 1 in the market could certainly represent some nice value in race number five race number six the middle stakes over 1700 meters the off time is three o'clock silent war two to one into 17 to 10 33 to 10 about number eight la muhal it's uh, nine to two pyromaniac and then it's eight to one and better about those now uh, silent war i'm still not sure how we got beat last time out uh, behind the stable companion scallywag 62 kgs on the back he tries the distance uh, for the first time he's been up to 1800 meters so it shouldn't be much of a concern and uh, he brings the right type of form in this uh, in this race to have a solid winning chance. And then we've got the improving three-year-old La Muhal with 52 kgs on the back. Uh, Keratila Cacchetti takes the right for Mike DeCock. Are those the two horses uh, that you're playing around in race six? I've left out La Muhal, I must be honest, because that form that he brings last time, although winning well and although being progressive, it's not pretty form. Um, Laughing William ran no sort of race um, just about a week ago, although there were excuses for that. Um, so I'm probably being a bit too clever for my own good here. I've gone four horses in my bar pot. They are one, two, seven, and nine. With Silent War easily my top choice. Is he not stretched by this trip? That's my, my biggest worry. When he went on that streak, I know he went over a mile. This is only 100 meters more. And he ran last time like he would get the extra 100, but he got totally caught up by a stable companion, Scallywag. He's got a lot of weight to shoulder, 62 kilos. Um, he's been a totally different horse since getting up to the half halts. I mean, look at his record. He's missed a check only once, and that was at the second start over 1,200 metres at the VAR. But since then, he's not looked back, and he's he's looked the past, and he's gone through the divisions, and no one probably would have expected him to reach a rating of 99, and he has every chance of building on that after this race. But a pyromaniac, for me, has got to be the most frustrating horse in the country. The ability that he showed as a youngster and where he is now, I think the bottom line is he doesn't have a distance. I don't think he's got a trip. And Sean's dabbled over ridiculous distances like 1475, 1500 metres and 1700 metres. I mean, you'd hate to not have a specialist over a mile and 1800 metres, but have a specialist over one of those unique distances and you actually got nowhere to run for another 12 months. So Pyromaniac, if, if he does handle 1,700 metres, he probably will. Um, despite a bad draw, his overall ability is just better than anyone else in this race. So I'm going to make a strong case for him as, as being a likely danger. Seven free movement. I've, I've always kept this horse in my good books, the son of master of my fate. Lovely, striking son of master of my fate. He's got absolutely no running. Um, so you've got to sit and hold and, and, and pray that you push the button at the right time because if you go to stride too early, you'll split it out and jockey work bad. But he's back on the inside track for the first time in a while and I think that could work for him. I know he's not won on the inside course before. He's been caught up with that no running type of uh, deal and when he won his two races he beat some very ordinary opposition but i think that now that he's learned a little bit more he's over the odds number seven free movement so i've got him and everything and number nine player was just left with far too much to do last time up behind the uh, scallywag that's also from the same form as silent war he receives a lot of a lot of weight from silent war so i think that's going to also bring him into the picture of muzi and he's just able to get him a couple of lengths closer um, number nine players not one to leave out of trifectas and quartets and he can spring up because he's definitely good enough to give it a shake uh, 12 to 1 in the market he could certainly be some nice value in race number six but um a number of horses for alistair in the sixth race and a race where if you are looking past silent wall well then uh, you could be in for a result in race six which is the start of jackpot two race number seven it's an mr80 handicap over 1800 meters 15 35 is the off time 
And uh, in this uh, contest, you can scratch number one, uh, American, American Star. So that's out. It's a field of just eight runners that uh, remain for this uh, event. And uh, Alistair, what's your thoughts on, on race number seven? You've obviously got um, this uh, the source, Lebecio, who's in a good form. He's won his last uh, he's won two of his last three. Richard Free sticks with the ride. So he's a horse on the up, but his form over the distance hasn't been uh, all that uh, great. And then uh, Judgment Day won his last start, won it quite well. He's uh, he's obviously on the up, and uh, the blinkers seem to have done the trick with him. Well, Judgment Day won. I'm looking at the form line right now, Rio. Judgment Day won a maiden last time, uh, beating Rosario Finale. And the only horse who's done anything was Master Ariano, who obviously came out and won at the Val on Thursday and won pretty well. But he was a gin strike. So I think that was pretty much well set up for Judgment Day um, last time out. Um, but um, now he's going to be tested to a certain level this time around uh, in a handicap. Um, number seven, Lebecio, also got to have a good chance. He's in good form at the moment. Richard Faria is back on board for Tyrone Zaki. He, he certainly turned the corner this year, has Lebecio. He's not looked back, so he's got to have every chance as well. And then number four, Pewter Sky, although winning doesn't come too easily for the son of Cape Town. While Pelissande and Pauli is on board for, for Paul Matchett and... He's, he's not, he can't be too far away, can Pewter Sky. I think that he's also going to be some sort of threat. So I've narrowed it down to those three horses, four, five, and seven. I must be honest, I'm, I expect to double up in the uh, final leg of the bar board. Hopefully we can just get through those tricky races earlier on in the day. No chance for the six of place in the sun? Um, I like the last couple of runs, but I think that she's taking on more established hard knockers. She's taking on boys as well. Um, I've sidestepped her. I've got more time for the owner companion, number nine, Holocene. I think Holocene will finish in front of number six, a place in the sun. That's just the way that I read it. Yeah, fair point there with number six, a uh, place in the sun. Four, five, and seven for Alistair in race number seven. Race number eight, 1,200 meters the distance. It's a middle stakes, 10 past four, the off time. Midwinter wind, even money favorite. Uh, 11 to 2, Karangatang, 6 to 1, Austin Kerr, 7 to 1, Sao Bomber, 10 to 1, and better bar those. Now, when I was looking at uh, at the nominations for racing on Sunday out at Hollywood Bets Gravel, I saw this horse, Midwinter wind, in, uh, nominated for the Bailey Turk, but uh, Sean has obviously scratched him there and he's running him uh, on Saturday, which. Uh, but given the indication, he, he's gone for the, for the easier race with uh, a couple of other races in mind for him. Yeah, there's no doubt that Midwinter Wind is of a certain amount of quality. He's done very well of late as Midwinter Wind, uh, having completed three in a row, which was well and truly overdue um, from Midwinter Wind. And, and I found it interesting that Sean kept all his options open um, with Midwinter Wind. If he does run um, at Turfentine on, on Saturday, then he'll take all the beating. Draw one's got to be a big advantage for him. Um, the form that he brings last time beating Texas Red, which was a very, very good effort indeed. Obviously, Texas Red coming out and franking that form in a, in a hot pinnacle stakes, beating graded horses like Humdinger, Give Me a Shot, and Bingwe. The more I look at this midwinter wind, um, looks... Uh, as good an even money shot as you'll see. Sounds of love from Karangatang of late, which has been good to see, but he's going to give Midwinter Wind four kilos, taking on the Improver. It's going to be hard to, to turn over number five Midwinter Wind. So uh, very, very uh, strong selection in race number eight. You're all in with number five Midwinter Wind. Texas Red, obviously, Frank in the form uh, last week or the week before when we went in... Uh Quite a competitive race, and uh, this horse is uh, no doubt on the up. He's looking for four victories in a row, and Richard Furry uh, is aboard him once again. Moving along to race number nine, the final race on the day, 16.45, the off time. It's an MR72 handicap over 1,450 meters. Favorite run for cover at 13 to 10. It's uh, 5 to 1 about feel all right. 7 to 1, Trippi's Tune. 8 to 1, Aravadicho. 8 to 1, Van Mael. It's then 10 to 1 and better bar those. Now, uh, I'm not going to ask you about Aravadicho because uh, that, that boat has, has sailed. Number 3, run for cover, 13 to 10. One draw should be hard to beat. Back down in trip. Well, when run for cover, one is penultimate start. You you won't believe how everything just fell into place from draw one over the same course and distance with Ryan Munger on board. It's it's pretty much a, a copy and paste, really. Last time, he was just never going to have that much luck in running. Um, this time, if he has 
70% of the luck and running that he had as penultimate start. He'll win this as well. Um, so he's undoubtedly the horse with a target on his back. He's undoubtedly the horse they all need to be. I also put a, a bit of a question mark against him over a mile last time out. So I think everything is in his favour. He's got the champion elect jockey on board. Um, undoubtedly. Undoubtedly at the top of the list. I've got a horse at a huge price. Let me have a look here what price he is. 25 to 1 shot, who I think can run into the money. Number 11, Written in Stone, who I went for last time on the inside track from draw one, but that was over a mile. Now he's back to a more happy place. He's got 48 kilos on his back here, Rahil. I've been waiting for this horse on the inside track in the right race for such a long time. Last time we nearly got there, but it was over a mile. This time I think that we... We're pretty much good to go here with Ritten and Stone running his best race in a very, very long time. I think that he's going to, I don't think he can miss the first three and he's going to make money on this uh, uh, in this race. So put him into everything, run for cover, top choice, Ritten and Stone, the money maker, and then heaps of horses that, that can well get into the mix. Five trippies tune, I vowed never again with Aravadicho, so I'm going to stick with that. Uh, Ten Nazare, one field, all right. I think they're all running for minor money here, but no doubt money maker number 11, Ritten and Stone. 25 to 1 in the market, the price about number 11 written in zone. Exactus, swingers, each way play with the, this 11 horse in race number 9. Moving along to the suggested bet now. And Alistair will take us through his suggested bet for racing out at Tilfantine on Saturday. Nine races on the program. So Alistair, take it away. Yep, it's a bar pot. Starts in race number two at 25 to 1. Open up with the banking number four, Legend of Arthur. Very, very, very hard horse to beat. By one and five, Empress of Normandy and Autumn Var. That's a race I'm most uneasy about. By banking number one, there's a lance in the third leg. Race five, fourth leg, gone with numbers five, Circus Light, seven, Sam the Wise Man, and eight, Smelting. Then the penultimate leg, one, Pyromaniac, two, Silent War, seven, Free Movement, and nine, Player. And then the final leg, gone three horses, four, Pewter Sky, five, Judgment Day, and number seven, Libet. Alistair, thank you very much for your time and for your insight with racing out uh, at Serpentine on Saturday. Hopefully uh, it's a good day and um, have a wonderful Easter weekend. Thanks for Hill saying to uh, you, your family and uh, all the viewers, all the race goers, all the racing fans. Um, the dogs at least got their uh, points across as well towards the end through races 7 and 8. So hopefully that's helped everyone else as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much and uh, looking forward to next week. Looking forward to the weekend, obviously, but looking forward to next week. That Turfentine meeting is always special. All the best with racing out at Turfentine on Saturday and uh, have a wonderful Easter weekend to all the valued uh, players out there. Hopefully uh, all falls into place over this uh, long weekend.